uh, page 13, uh, if I may direct the congregation, is uh, writing about Team Sky and uh, David Brailsford, and it's uh, David Walsh who's doing just that. Yeah. With the um, Select Committee report, and apologies for the rattling of the papers there, uh, which said that Sky were crossing an ethical line in their use of therapeutic use exemptions uh, to treat their riders, uh, especially in the lead-up to, uh, to big races, namely the 2011 and 2012 uh, Tour de France. Um, David Walsh is having to write an almost mea culpa here. Uh, it, it, the, the main piece, while detailing um, the Michael Barry story and, and CJ, or, uh, CJ Sutton and um, all of that kind of stuff that has led us to where Sky are now, it's almost the sub piece underneath that's the more interesting because a lot of people would want David Walsh's perspective on this story as it is now because obviously having written a book with Chris Froome and having been embedded with Team Sky in around 2013 uh, people want to see where, where Walsh is in relation to all that now He's, uh, he writes uh, the cautionary tale that comes with Team Sky hits closer to home after the Lance Armstrong era I wanted to believe in the team Brailsford built when he invited me to spend time with the team in 2013 I accepted because of a belief that the team was doing things the right way it was a mistake on my part did Brailsford use me to further his whiter than white message definitely uh, but that is not unusual team managers in all sports attempt to influence what sports writers do Kena. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of truth in that as well. His next line is, it is up to journalists to see the manipulation for what it is. And I think probably um, David's problem is, um, and I think he is a very good journalist, but I think on this one, um, I think that he um, defended them for far too long. And I think that's the issue that people have with them was that why did he continually come back and sort of, you know, refuse things so often when it became increasingly clear. Um, now, the main piece today is the dark night. The headline is the dark night and there's a big picture of uh, David Brailsford. And interesting enough, Shane McGrath, I think, in the Mail on Sunday points out that while while lots of even the British journalists are willing to point out now that there's a problem at Sky, they aren't exactly hammering um, uh, the two cyclists, you know, the two main people, if you like. It's like it's easier to dump on the people behind it uh, than it is on. So it, that's a constant thread throughout uh, UK sport and to a degree here as well. Is yeah, if things go wrong, is, yeah. you blame the manager, you, yeah, you blame the chairman, nearly you blame the wrong. people in charge of the fixtures, yeah. you do all that kind of stuff. You don't necessarily point the finger at yeah, the players. Yeah. Uh, for a prolonged period anyway. Yeah, but uh, so th- so it's probably as close as we're going to get to a mayor culpa from David Walsh, I think this bottom piece um, and the headline is, or, or the subheadline is Sir Dave Brailsford kept me in the dark, but the truth is seeping out. Um, so yes, you know, there is an admission there that... Um, he says it's 18 months since he last spoke to Brailsford. Um, it was a long, fractious conversation. The bottom line for me was that he deliberately had not mentioned anything about Bradley Wiggins' TUEs when inviting me into the team. The third of those TUEs happened during the 13 weeks that I was around the team and I knew nothing about it. Um, and he says, I wasn't the only one in the dark. Doctors who worked for the team told me they knew nothing about Wiggins' TUEs until the application was delivered and the tri- trium cyclone was, um, was injected. Eventually, three sky doctors gang together in the late 2013 to prevent the colleague Dr Richard Freeman who's now of course too ill to give any um, uh, talk to anybody getting a fourth TUE um, so you know I think yeah I think you know this is as close as you're probably going to get to him saying look I was wrong up, you know yeah. hands up there you know there's a, a, the main piece is actually a good read because it is a very you know very clear timeline on everything that's happened and I think you know um, if, you, if you're looking about it uh, if you want to find out anything really in detail about this very good there's a really interesting line in it and the word he used I think is very interesting um, he's talking about the parliamentary committee report last week and what he says it stands as a damning indictment of the moral and ethical iffiness that underpinned the culture at team it's Sky. All very, the language of it and is all iffiness very I think is not strong enough to me and I think that that is there's a little bit of um, you know uh, I, I would go much stronger than ethical iffiness the, there there seems to be an, an issue of uh, and with all of this and again, again the case is going to be it seems like that final piece of the puzzle when we seem like we know what has actually happened in the past seven eight years is going to come if and when Richard Freeman actually talks which he isn't yeah. willing or unable to do and also at this I think, moment in time and also I think Shane Sutton because he says in this article um, um, within Team Sky, it's believed that Shane Sutton was the source for Lawton's. That's Matt Lawson, who's done such brilliant work on this with the Daily Mail. And he says it's believed that Shane Sutton was the source for Lawton's story. But that has never been confirmed, as far as I know, Richard. I don't remember him to no. confirming that to, uh, no. up until this point. Um, a team Which Sky goes be- against what, what Walsh said as well, because he said that Sutton's um, evidence in front of the parliamentary committee was what didn't come across as credible. 
well, the yeah, well. yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's a remarkable uh, thing it's, to come around uh, and go. Uh, yeah, and, it, and Sutton's Sutton's evidence now is really the one that seems to have really pushed things over the cliff. Yeah. And in the final piece in that main piece, he says, at Team Sky, they used to say that Sutton was both a brilliant coach and a loose cannon. They understood that. What they didn't understand was that one day the cannon would be turned on them. So therefore, he is pointing um, strongly to Sutton in this space. It, it, it Hugo, the source like, of that information. Sky were almost the last hope for uh, for clean cycling. When you see the line being blurred, pushed, edged closer towards tiptoed around whatever way you want to put it um, it, it does mortal damage to the sport when you see stuff like this continuing to drift feed out because you, your theory is if this is what Sky were up to yeah. what's X, Y and yeah. Z doing you know and I think that's exactly why the tone of David's piece is so how could I be fooled or how could you could you do that to me I mean I, I've known David Walsh for a long time and, and it's a really fine journalist and I remember meeting him in the north of England very early on on the whole Lance Armstrong thing and he's talking about what he was going you know, was doing and all the stuff and of course it was just he was him against 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 so many but and this was just the problem of of for for cycling as a sport and the Tour de France this great sort of you, you know part of French way of life that you're looking at and say can I believe can I believe in it and you know, the natural instinct that we have is uh, give me something I can believe in and that's what I think the tone was David with, with, with Sky was, was kind of saying and that's why I think his you know his disappointment and his, his, his frustration is, is, is so huge yeah. Which you say you know it's done mortal damage to cycling has it though do you know this But in terms of the public's view of it I, well, I, d- I don't know that it does really because like uh, you know somebody I think here in this station during the week quoted the famous you know line like the only people who care about doping in sport are, are, are journalists and you know the sports themselves. There's like, public I, actually I, doesn't. I, 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 I do you think so? Yeah. People yeah. still go to the Tour de France. They crowd along the, the, the roads every year. Well, in terms of the but doping stories, I can tell you now, Hugo, that we'll be getting texts as soon as this goes out. That like, oh, like literally everybody's at it. Why should we care? Like every yeah. the, the the care factor for doping exists uh, not entirely within the realm of sports journalism, but we do have a hell of a lot of ownership on it. But whereas the general public are like, eh, it is what it is. People are at it. They're at it. You know. I'll, it's it's. Sport is a form of entertainment for the viewing public, especially on yeah. TV. And as long as it's on TV, they don't care if they're deprived of it, whatever. And the thing about it is, cycling isn't the only sport that's involved. There's a lot of others that are keenly no, involved in this no, as well. No, of course that, not. That, and if they do eventually come out, you know, yeah. somewhere along the line, there's a lot of people going to come down with them, you know. Yeah, like I, I like I, I do, I do see uh, probably that numbers, you know, going to track and field events internationally may have been affected, but, but you know, you'll still get full stadiums for you know the big events, and you still, as I say, you still get thousands of people along the roads and the Alps every summer, and I go, I, I don't understand that, you know, so it, it, you do, you do wonder, all right, you know, where does it really affect people's, uh, and and are we just obsessed with this? But is it, but is it that like looking at from I look at it as a form of. It? you know entertainment and it's nice going by and it's great fun and it's my town it'll be a bit of a party and yeah. we'll take the kids and, and all and all of that but as opposed to I mean if you felt yesterday if we felt yesterday that some people on the Irish team were cheating you know yeah. were ab- absolutely cheating and it kind of came out that they were cheating and say it, say it came out would you feel the same way about it as, as as we do today? I don't know, but it's it's interesting. You're you're, you're the one. I, I think we'd have lots of yeah. debates about it. I think we talk a lot about it, and I think uh, there'd be loads of forward to talk about it. But uh, you know, the results if the results stood and Ireland still won the you know the the Grand Slam next week, would it change? Would it change it? I'm not sure. There is there'd, there'd be a slight issue question. when you have individual sports and you have team sports because if it does happen in a team sport, mm. the theory is that if somebody dopes in a team sport they are taking a risk but they're taking a risk as a lone wolf and they're trying to improve their own performance mm. within that as a whole but if they feel that the uh, instruction from the top down is that this is the way we're going to move forward and this is the way we're going to improve as a whole like if you're getting uh, Trent Simulon administered to you whether you need it or not before the 2011 Tour de France or whether Tour de France or whether other riders not just Wiggins are getting them mm. these things if, if it's a team if it's uh, a manager saying if it's a coaching setup saying that we are all doing this as one then you're in trouble then that's when you have an issue and that's what we've seen throughout cycling is that team doctors and team yeah. managers and all that have yeah. said this is the way we're going to progress you're going to get EPO you're going to get thing. you know it, it's happened since as long as we can remember now unfortunately and that's mm. that's where that's where the damage is done and that's where the you're not going to get many more newcomers to interested in cycling I don't think just by yeah. the very nature of the coverage of it over the past number of years well, that's an important point which is which is pretty pretty sad indeed